Good day, everyone. We are the representatives for Grade 10 for the Science Investigatory Project. Our SIP will be all about the creation of biodegradable plastic using peas or pisum sativum. The proponents are yours truly, Carolean Lacuadin, Gian Gabriel Angelitud, and Royce Vincent Pachau. Good day, everyone. I am Gian Gabriel F. Angelitud, and I will present the rationale. Pisum sativum is a pod fruit containing a typically small seed called pea. It is classified as a vegetable, and it is part of the family of legumes. Legumes are known for its vitamins and antioxidants. So in this research, we will be focusing on utilizing its starch content. Nowadays, life without plastic seems to be unthinkable as they play such a vital role in our society. The most commonly used plastic is conventional plastic, which we can see every day being used by other people. We produce about 300 million tons of plastic waste every year, and that's nearly equivalent to the weight of the entire population. With an alternative solution of starch-based biodegradable plastic, we can reduce the deterioration of plastic waste in our environment. Starch can be utilized to reduce the carbon footprint of traditional resins because they can replace petroleum-based polymers with natural ones, thus it is also highly degradable. The use of starch in the manufacturing process of bioplastic began as early as the 70s. Despite this fact, bioplastics currently represent only 1% of all the plastic being produced annually. According to non-profit organization World Centric, biodegradable plastic is plastic that will degrade from the action of naturally occurring microorganisms. Our main accomplishment for this study is that we would be able to create a plastic capable of decomposition in which we can help diminish the increasing pollution of plastic. For our statement of the problem, at the end of the study, we aim to answer the following questions. Is it possible to use pisum sativum as biodegradable plastic? How durable would pisum sativum as plastic be? Are there significant differences between the plastic made out of pisum sativum from the traditional commercially made plastics? Would the pisum sativum biodegradable plastic be successful enough to be used as a substitute for plastic? And is pisum sativum a sustainable and reliable ingredient in making biodegradable plastic? For our significance of the study, at the end of our research, we hope to benefit the following beneficiaries. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR, the Department of Trade and D Industry, or DTI, the Society, the Environment, researchers, and our fellow students. Good day, everyone. My name is Royce Vincent de Pichau, and I'm going to explain the scope and the limitation. The focus of this research is the possibility of utilizing pisum sativum as the primary ingredient in making biodegradable plastic. This research revolves around the idea of making a biodegradable plastic that can be used as an eco-friendly alternative for conventional plastics that aren't capable of decomposition. This study only tackles if the biodegradable plastic made from pisum sativum is achievable and reliable enough to be used by the business industry. This study, however, does not cover the entire solution for plastic pollution, but to reduce its deteriorating impact towards the environment by utilizing biodegradable plastic made of pisum sativum. For our review of related literature concerning biodegradable plastic and pisum sativum, starch as the main ingredient for biodegradable plastic. The advantages of starch for plastic production include its renewability, good oxygen barrier in the dry state, abundance, low cost, and biodegradability. This is also a natural polymer which makes starch biodegradable. Pisum sativum as a durable material in making biodegradable plastic. According to John Innocenta, the plastic made from pea starch presented excellent qualities and strength, elasticity, and flexibility. Pea starch plastic are also plant-based, which makes manufacturing biodegradable plastic easier. Pea starches are also much cheaper and readily available. For the second part of our review of related literature, biodegradable plastics as a possible alternative for plastic.
Biodegradable plastics are already introduced to the industry as a way to reduce non-biodegradable plastics. Biodegradable plastics are promising alternatives to conventional persistent plastics. The harmful effects of the continuous usage of conventional plastics. Conventional plastics have been continuously used in the whole world with many different functions. But since conventional plastics are made from petroleum, which is a non-renewable resource, it creates notable air and water pollution. So for the definition of terms, you can see here the definition of this complex terms. Antioxidants, it is a substance that inhibits oxidation, especially one used to counteract the deterioration of stored food products. Biodegradable, it refers to the ability of things to get decomposed by the action of microorganisms such as bacteria or fungi while getting assimilated into the natural environment. Conventional plastic. Conventional plastics, such as fossil fuel plastics, also called petroleum-based polymers, are derived from petroleum or natural gas. Decomposition, it refers to the reduction of the body of a formerly living organism into simpler forms of matter. Greenhouse gases are gases in Earth's atmosphere that trap heat. Non-biodegradable, it can be defined as a kind of such cannot be broken down by natural organisms and acts as a source of pollution. Polymer, it is any class of natural or synthetic substances composed of very large molecules. Resins are typically vicious substances that convert into rigid polymers through a curing process. And lastly, starch, it is a polymeric carbohydrate consisting of numerous glucose units joined by glycosidic bonds. Now for the first part of our methodology. This portion of the study will explore the methodology exerted by the proponents during the experiment. First, we have the extraction of starch from peas. The proponents needed to extract the starch from the peas. The method in doing so follows crushing the peas, covering the crushed peas with warm waters, straining the peas, and then reserving the water. This watering and straining process was repeated until the water was clear. The starch would be left at the bottom of the water. Next is the drying of the wet starch. After the extraction of starch from the peas, the researchers would be left with wet starch. The proponent spread the wet starch out onto a flat surface and let it to dry and harden. It took about 24 hours for the starch to harden. After the starch was finally dry, the researchers then proceeded to break and grind the starch up, the dried starch up. Then we have the making of the biodegradable plastic. The pea starch, vinegar, glycerin, and water were all combined and steered together in a small pan. The pan was then put on the stovetop to be heated up for about 10 to 15 minutes. The researchers proceeded to pour the mixture onto an aluminum foil. The mixture was left in a cool and dry place for a minimum of two days. After two days, the mixture finally hardened and all that was left was the biodegradable plastic. For the second part of methodology, we tested the biodegradable plastic that we made. We conducted four tests, which is test of biodegradability, test of clarity, test of flammability, and test of tensile strength. For test of biodegradability, to do this test, we simply use the box filled with soil and position the plastic in the middle and inside of the box. We observe the changes to it every month. For the test of clarity, we research that there are suitable equipments for testing its clarity, but since we are in a pandemic, we could not get a hold of any of these equipments. So, so using a flashlight, a piece of paper, and a pen, we shined the light directly to the plastic and compared which light went through the most. We also played the plastic, placed the plastic above the paper, and tried to determine which plastic is transparent enough to read what we wrote down on the paper. For the test of flammability, for flammability, we exposed the plastic to, to an open flame, then removed it as soon as it catches on fire. We observed the length of the time it burned, how severe or minor the burn was, if it dripped flaming particles, if the material continued to burn, and the rate of the burn. With the information, we were able to differentiate the flammability of pea starch plastic and traditionally commercially made plastic. For the last test, test of tensile strength, we simply put as much force as we can on our biodegradable plastic by stretching it apart. Compare it with traditional commercial made plastics, we use the same method, whichever breaks easier means it has weaker tensile strength and whichever endures longer has the stronger tensile strength of the two. All right, so good day, grade 10.
congratulations for a job well done in presenting your SIP. So now let's proceed with the question and answer portion. Let's start with the first question. What current problems did you observe that made you choose your research topic? So thank you for that question, Ma'am Shan. So the current problem that we observed that made us choose our research topic was that nowadays we were faced with a pandemic and our number one priority and concern is our health. So there is nothing wrong with prioritizing our health. We are often neglecting the problems that surround us, being at our homes because of the quarantine and the places that we have now is that it made us realize the amount of waste, especially plastic waste, it is accumulating in our houses and we cannot help but think of how much this could affect our environment and how less likely these are to compose. Because of those reasons, we tried to find a suitable ingredient and for biodegradable plastic and found out that these are a good candidate thus creating our research title. All right, thank you so much for that wonderful answer, Gian. Now let's proceed with the second question. What was or were the hypothesis of your research study? Um, I will be the one answering that question for Mom. Thank you for that wonderful question. Um, the hypothesis of our research were all null hypotheses. We have a total of five hypotheses, all which says that the product that we made was not possible or reliable enough to be as an alternative. We have the first one, which is pea starch based plastic is not possible. Another would be is that it is not durable enough to be plastic. The third one is that there are no significant differences between plastic in terms of biodegradability, flammability, clarity, and strength. The last two would be pisum sativum, or P, is not a reliable and sustainable ingredient, and that it could not serve as an alternative for plastic. That is my answer to that question, Paul. Okay, thank you so much, Carol. Now, let's proceed with the third question. What methodology will you use to verify your hypothesis? I will be the one to answer that question, ma'am. Thank you for that wonderful question. So the methodology we used to prove our hypothesis were wrong were several tests. All our hypotheses were null, so we had to simply prove that it was inaccurate. For our methodology, we followed a basic step-by-step -step procedure on how to make a biodegradable plastic at home, though we replaced some ingredients with our own. That was our methodology in making the biodegradable plastic without the help of advanced technology. There were also tests to verify that the starch plastic was indeed a better alternative for plastic. All of them were tested with methods that we researched and analyzed, though we made sure that we could test it in the safety of our homes, given that science laboratories are most likely closed during the pandemic. And that's my answer, Pa. Okay, thank you so much for that one, Royce. Now let's proceed with your RRL. So can you cite at least one study or article from your RRL that supports your research? So I will be the one answering that thought. So the question was, can you cite at least one study or article from your RRL that supports your research? My answer for that would be, this one article that supports our research that is called biodegradable plastic as an integral part of the solution to plastic waste pollution of the environment. This particular study said that biodegradable plastics were promising alternatives to conventional and persistent plastics. There were also articles that once research about tea starch plastic, according to John Ein's Center, the plastic made from pea starch presented excellent qualities in strength, elasticity, and flexibility. Pea starch plastics were also plant-based, so it made manufacturing them there easier. Okay, now let's proceed with the last question. So what were the hardest and easiest part you encountered in doing your SIP? 
Um, thank you for another wonderful question po, ma'am. I will be the one answering that question. And I would say the hardest part we encountered in doing our science investigatory project was creating it in such a short amount of time. Since we just finished our monthly exams, teachers have been giving out their performance tasks left and right. As responsible students, we had to juggle our time and prioritize which project to do first. We actually had to spend a day without doing SIP because we had to do different kinds of tasks. That is what I think would be the hardest part of our SIP. For the easiest part, on the other hand, I would say it's the research title. We simply address what problems we had that we could address and settled with what we thought was the best option for the research title. It was also a team effort, so we didn't really overthink too much. So that, for me, were both the hardest and easiest part uh, that we have encountered in our SIP book. All right, so thank you so much, grade 10 level, for a job well done for your SIP. So that would be all, and have a great day.